Hello everybody, one more time and welcome to What's Next, our podcast and blog series about startups and innovation. My name is Giovanni Vacari, I am the head of product here at Startup Bootcamp, and today, in this week's episode, we will be interviewing our super mentor, Hans Richtering, that was my best attempt at his last name, who is also the product owner at Agility Masters. Hi Hans, happy to have you here. Hi Gio, nice to be here. How are you doing today? Fine. Yeah? Yep. Nice having you. Hans is always at our office because you've mentored how many startups now, huh? I've been here since 2018. So there were five fintech and cybersecurity programs. Oh my there God. One e-commerce, media, um, BitHealth Inc. So like 60, 70 startups at yeah. least. Yeah. My God, that's a lot. Yep. And uh, how? D- first, you come from 20 years plus from the banking industry, so right? True. And you make the jump to the startup world. Tell us a little bit about how did that go? Uh, well, I always like to be in the front line where the things are sizzling and bubbling and uh, so where the energy is. Um, I've been working at a bank uh, for 23 years at ABN Emerald Bank and later at Rabobank. But uh, I always had a bit of a feeling that uh, the things are really happening somewhere else. So uh, that was what was pushing me like uh, at some point like, okay, do I want to do this for the rest of my life or is this there's so much more to explore? Yeah. So that's when I stepped out and um, at the uh, ABN Emerald Bank, I had a wonderful time there, but uh, and a lot of experience uh, I gained. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think uh, new uh, opportunities opened up. Since then, I've worked with uh, Friesland Campina Dairy Company. Yeah. Uh, with a uh, huge uh, dairy company, right? I think the largest so in true. the, yeah. the yeah. world yeah. or something. Yes, yeah. yeah. so true. Yeah, you can feel, uh, find that cheese and uh, milk in Thailand uh, and <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, China. There's a uh, cheese tea. And uh, um, uh, but also at uh, Randstad in uh, public transport, at, yeah, uh, the Hague Transport uh, Company, and so there was so much more companies. And now I'm working at Nutshell in Nederland. Okay, and then you do that through Agility Masters, or you do yes, oh super so cool. And what do you guys do at Agility Masters? Uh, we coach teams, so to be uh, com- as mostly Scrum Masters uh, and also product owners and product managers. So we help teams to become more effective and more efficient and uh, help them work agile. So to be more uh, responsive to what's going around uh, in the world around them. Yeah. But mainly for uh, larger corporates. So. Oh, okay. So you work with corporate teams as well as the startup teams. Uh, yes. And, but not with uh, uh, Agility Master. We don't work with the startups. Uh, that's what you I do. You work with the startups. So true. Yes. Yes. Because you said, oh, I want to see where things are happening. And then spoiler so alert, yes. things yes. happen here. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so true. There's a, there's a real difference between uh, working with corporates and uh, working with startups. There's so much more energy. Uh, I always use the, the comparison that um, within a, a, a corporate when uh, the uh, board for example made their analysis found the trends then they assign a project manager and the project manager needs to align with all the senior managers and before you get there there are three months gone while a startup in the same time took 10 15 experiments um, this uh, a couple of ones and knew already what is working and what is not. So yeah. this is a totally different energy. Uh, this is a total different vibe there. A lot less pressure as well, right? I feel like in corporates, so a lot of people are there with the thought, we cannot fail this. And yeah. with the startups, like, oh, I hope this works. Yeah. But if it doesn't, we can pivot. Yeah. And in corporates, people can lose jobs if yeah. that one attempt doesn't work. Yeah. Which is like crazy because that's not the world we live in anymore. We can't be sure of everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. You can't force the customer, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to validate with them or something. Yeah, Yeah, and, and the, 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 the odd thing, of course, is that the, the bigger corporates, they recognize the energy and the fight that's going on with these startups where it's very yeah. fast moving, a lot of energy, um, um, can-do mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the same time, they sort of they, they want to capture it and have it in their own organization. But at some point, it always sort of fails because uh, it's... Uh, uh, the innovation paradox that the more mm-hmm. they invest in innovation and uh, being more agile the less successful they are 
because there's a lot of money involved and then you need control you need yeah to of course sort of be on top of things and, and then legal comes in <laughs> <laughs> or audit compliance compliance yeah but i think it's also part you know we had a few startups on the show saying talking about compliance and how compliance actually helped them become yep. a better startup yes uh, so it can be an enabler as well as a as a road blocker yeah definitely so it's not that uh, um i always say uh, compliance and uh, is really important for uh, companies um, but at the same time it's not the part of the um, company that I get the most energy from no <laughs> it's the part of the company that keeps the company as well uh, you know <laughs> so true. alive yeah <laughs> but um, how has it been for you now I mean you're you're with us for so many years thank thank you by the way for that yeah. it's really it means a lot uh, how is how has it been this at this adventure um, in the beginning, it was a bit of uh, because I, I haven't really uh, uh, been at a startup myself, so I'm more mm. of uh, learning from the mistakes of other people. And Which over is very the years, beneficial. <laughs> yes. So over the years, I saw, uh, I learned a lot from the startups, and it's one of the things that as a mentor you can gain from uh, being a mentor. Mm. That it's it's going both ways. Not only the startups learn from uh, from the mentors, but the mentors also learn a lot from the startups. So it's going both ways, and this is what I really experienced over the years. So um, there's a, a lot of uh, um, exchange of uh, yeah knowledge expertise. As well. And where do you find yourself constantly repeating to startups? Um, that you're like, oh, I thought you guys would know this by now. <laughs> the, 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 the surprise actually is that it can be with really simple things, mm -hmm. really small things that you th think like, this is so uh, obvious that, uh, that you didn't think of this before. Um, um, because it's a total, so totally different scene that they are operating in. Um, for example, normally a, a way of working uh, alignment across the teams, especially when they are sort of distributed, uh, disseminated across the uh, the world or on different locations. There are mechanisms within uh, Scrum and Agile that can really help uh, teams align. And I'm always surprised. Like this is a sort of mechanism to work according to Scrum, and people are going. This is so important for me. This would really help me. Yeah, and it can even be on a different level because, as a mentor, I always think it's very good to listen to the startups mm -hmm. because you have so much expertise as a mentor. And but the best practices that you know are only applicable in a certain circumstances, certain situation, and in a part of the startup, right? So true. So you can't run their company. So true. So I always. Uh, um, prefer to carefully listen and at some point for example in the beginning there was one of these startups and I listened and I just made a drawing of mm -hmm. what I heard and they were going like whoa this is so interesting and they used it in the demo day sort of to show because it sort of captured what they wanted to uh, share so that's really nice just so making a drawing can help them already you see, but that's also what I keep saying. You don't have to come from... Also, I, I sometimes as well prefer that the mentor doesn't come from an entrepreneurial background only. You know, mm -hmm. like you, you have entrepreneurs that become mentors, which is amazing on that, you know, how to be an entrepreneur mindset. Yeah. But also people that come from a corporate environment, like there is so much compound knowledge that you get by working in these giants yeah. that a startup cannot get in such a short amount of time, only through mentorship. Yeah. So true, and uh, with corporates, uh, um, well, they invest a lot in this stuff. So all the knowledge that I gained over the years, it's now something that I can sort of, yeah, bring to the startups again. And I think it's always most of these startups, in the end, they want to grow big and become sort of on a corporate level themselves. Yeah. And at the same time, they want to keep, keep. the energy and uh, the, 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 the vibe that they got uh, in the beginning. So it's a bit of a strange thing, actually. That, uh, but... Um, for startups to connect with um, uh, corporates and to maybe uh, be part of that uh, 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 corporate, um, it's always good to know both worlds. So yeah. to know, uh, for example, um, if the f in the fintech scene, I know it takes a long time to really be uh, uh, connected to the um, uh, the financial world. It takes a long runway yeah. because it's different cultures. 100%, but so also if you're a hardware startup, I mean, it's going to take you much longer just yep. because it takes so much investment. Yep. Every startup has a cycle. and But what I wanted to know is what is the number one mistake that startups make with the Scrum methodology? 
Um, what's the number one mistake? Most of them don't know actually uh, about uh, because, because Scrum is a, is a way of thinking and a way of working, and they know the agile way of working, but the mechanisms that sort of steer Scrum, that's uh, something that's pro- potentially unknown to them. Okay. At the same time, I must say, not all startups are the same. So as a mentor, it's not always that you can have something that ap- that applies to all startups. That's also tying into uh, that you have to listen carefully. Where can I add something? Where can I contribute something? So um, some startups very well know how to align with each other and to um, become more effective and efficient. I think one of the mistakes is when they start um, uh, being part of an accelerator, they miss how intense the program is. And at the same time, they are building their company and they're also yeah. having... You're building uh, the moving car, eh? So true. You're sort of building a bridge while walking on it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people use the metaphor of we're flying and playing while building it, but I like the bridge metaphor more. Yeah, it so sounds a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds a little bit less like a Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Okay, but in the, I mean, you mentioned as well now with, with working remote, right? Yes. Why is that so important then to have Agile and Scrum? And um, For me personally, uh, there was a mechanism there, like for example, uh, every day you have a daily alignment with each other. And if you're distributed and disseminated, and especially in startup scene, everybody has a sort of different role. So I'm for marketing, I'm the tech, uh, I'm the CEO, and everybody is can easily end up in working on their own island. So you have to uh, align with each other on a daily basis over and over again. And Mm -hmm. then I think one of the things that a lot of um, startups don't do, which is quite prominent within uh, Agile way of working at Scrum, is to have the retrospective. And that's to talk about how do we communicate with each other? How do we work together? So it's not about the content, what we actually want to, uh, the product or the service that we're delivering, but it's about the way we interact with each other, the interact with yeah. the way we... So it's, it's not, not a, a reporting. process level. It's not a reporting session either. No, definitely not. And the, the fun thing actually is that um, it brings energy to the group because you're talking with each other on a different level. It's not about the content or what I have to do today. Now it's how do we communicate? Why I am so angry with you? Why uh, yeah. is, is this giving me so much energy? So the simple format is what go, goes wrong, what can we do better, and are there any good ideas? So if you take this format and you start a discussion with each other on this, then it brings a whole lot of different energy and it can improve actually your way of working as a team. Yeah, and also complaining, uh, you learn as well about what to complain. Yep. Because some things are just complaining and they're part of life. Oh, wow, I'm working a lot. Yes, that's the st- that's the startup. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, we have so many bugs and so yes. little people. Yes, and because yeah. it's small, there are, it's also that yeah, uh, a lot of people bring in their personal life. It's yeah. hidden for uh, most of the others, but um, there are real people with real problems, especially on uh, when the people are younger, so they are in uh, relationships yeah. and uh, things can impact the, uh, the startup. So sometimes you end up as a mentor also doing a bit on uh, <laughs> that. Uh, that basis. You, you, you know what I love about that? Because when I was taught how to clean my room, I was taught that you first do the bigger things first. Mm-hmm. First, take the most vi- the, the, the thing that is most visual in your room, like your bed or okay. something big, 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 because it gives you that false feeling of progress. Yes. And Scrum gives me that feeling of progress because every day we're getting closer to something or to an achievement. Yes. And that's where the vision comes in. And I think that uh, that's uh, really good that most of the, uh, the startups, they have a vision, they have a dream, something to realize. And that's what's of, often missing within the corporate world. So mm-hmm. to have a vision, something that you dream of to realize. So it brings that, that's also part of bringing a totally different uh, energy uh, to the team. Nice. You mentioned that a, a good mentor also listens. Yes. What does a bad mentor do? And please don't say just talk. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think a bad mentor sort of drives the company, um, sort of makes the company itself. I mean, there, um, as a mentor, if you tell people just what to do and uh, they don't do what you tell them to do uh, because it's their company, yeah, then you sort of lose them. And I think that you, that's bad mentoring. So you have yeah. to guide them, not sort You're of You're not the executive over. team. So true. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, you can be an advisory mentor, though, and be on the adv- advisory board. Yes, but you have always uh, taken into account it's their company and not yours. So if you, um, so that you can advise them, you can bring in your, um, um, uh, your knowledge and expertise, but uh, the startup always has to um, um, yeah, make its own decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Ries says you have to, be the, have to be stubborn to lead the startup. But at the same time, you need to be coachable to listen from the mentors. So it's the interaction. And a lot of mentors uh, yeah, get a bit frustrated by the, 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 the CEO of the uh, startup doesn't follow up on what he or she advises. So, and that's, uh, I think, man, uh, bad mentoring because you have to um, step back and let them make the mistakes and uh, let them uh, yeah, fail and learn from that as well. I get that. And what would you say um, that a startup needs to bring to a mentoring session, a mentorship session? Yeah, that's a good one. I think uh, the more you share also uh, what goes wrong as a startup, the better the mentor can tie into the situation, learn Mm -hmm. from you and uh, the situation that you're in. Everybody always has a sort of mental picture. So yeah. when I'm talking to you, there's a mental picture going on in your head and the same thing happens with me. And you, ha- The more you share with each other, the more you talk to each other, the more you can align with each other and the more you can also, the mentor can bring in better advice mm-hmm. at the moment he knows better what you're dealing with and uh, the situation that you're in. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, um, yeah, as a startup, you have to uh, uh, listen carefully mm-hmm. and pick the things that are useful for you and ditch the things that you think like okay this is not uh, applicable for me uh, the third thing is uh, you need to be coachable so and eager to learn yeah so if you have this then it's um, also very uh, rewarding for the mentor of course but um, if, if you are coachable then you profit from the, the accelerator program it doesn't say that if you're not coachable that you won't be successful because maybe you find different ways to become successful of course, life is not about never about one factor, but so it does help a lot. I mean, like we, we yeah. have not selected teams for Startup Bootcamp because they were not coachable. Like that is a huge point because yeah. if you are not willing to learn, you're not willing to change with the market, you're not willing to learn from the new trends, you're not willing to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But um, how can a startup say no? That's a question I got yesterday from one of the startups. They said, this mentor brought me a new path for my startup, mm-hmm. right? They said, why don't you guys go, let's say, uh, B2C. I'm not going to go into details here, but, uh, and they said, yeah, that's not for us, but they didn't know how to say no. They were like, they, uh, we're so grateful for the tip, but yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Like we don't agree with it. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, um, personally, I don't uh, um, have a problem when the, uh, a startup says no to me. I say, okay, it's uh, your decision. And even if I upfront, uh, upfront know that uh, this is really helping them, um, they should have the, the, the room and the freedom to sort of experience it themselves. So I and maybe that's a, that's a tip. Don't take it personally. So mm-hmm. uh, as a mentor, if they don't follow up on you. I always, uh, uh, and um, I think it's co- committing is uh, um, also part of the mentorship. So if uh, a startup says, uh, no, I'm not going to follow up, stay committed. So just guide them, let them fail, let them see, let them experiment. And maybe as a mentor, they don't follow up, but still find new ways. And I can learn from that uh, in turn. And uh, for somebody that wants to become a mentor, uh, as well, we see some people that are like, oh, I really would love to be around these startups, but I don't know if I can be a mentor. I don't know if I have enough experience. I don't know if I'm good enough to be a mentor. Yeah. What would you what would you say to them? Um, my my uh, um, starting point is always that uh, you never know what part of the puzzle that you can fill in for them. So talk to these startups and, and uh, get to uh, know them. And at some point, you'll be surprised where you can sort of help them. I mean, personally, um, although I have been uh, involved in uh, within the bank for, with legal and compliance, I'm not uh, a legal advisor. So maybe that's where someone else uh, fits uh, in. And uh, again, um, there is a picture that the startups present, and at the same time, the picture that the uh, mentors present about themselves. But when you dive deeper, some other things 
pop up to the service as well and um, you may fit in and ask uh, answer questions or help them with your feedback or your network that um, can uh, really help them. That was heartwarming, by the way. <laughs> you never know which part of the puzzle you're going to fit in. You mentioned networking. Yes. I mean, how important is that um, as for a mentorship session? Yes. Um, yes, you have a network and uh, pro potentially it's uh, huge and you can uh, connect them uh, with uh, the startups with a lot of people. But I always want to have a two way. So both parties should profit. It's not that I'm sort of like sending off uh, the startups to uh, any contact that uh, might be helpful. Yeah. Um, so it should also pro uh, be profitable for the one I bring uh, them, uh, yeah, I connect uh, them with. Um, and um, there, there, but that's also coming. Uh, you have to realize that uh, within the corporate sphere, it's seldom going further than a proof of concept, and yeah. that's the loss of the corporates. I feel so. Um, be prepared that it takes a long time, and uh, some yeah, you need uh, time to really get there. I mean, the first conversation is always easy. So you can open up your network and uh, bring yeah. them into connection. And they're always interested. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so if your first conversation went well, that's a good first step, but it's yes. the first step. Yes. And it's also that the people who you talk with really want to uh, uh, go further uh, mm -hmm. with you, but there are some levels on top that uh, look at uh, spreadsheets and uh, yeah. have a different view of things. There's only Too so bad. much a signature can lost. do. They're lost, they're yes. lost, yeah. Well, what do you get from mentoring? What do I get from mentoring? Of course, uh, it's very inspiring. I mean, uh, being uh, in this, yeah, around with this, all these people. And for me, personally, I'm uh, learning a lot. And um, I like to work with in a multicultural environment. I am learning from people with different cultures and backgrounds. And um, there's always sort of mirror to my own beliefs and the uh, system and uh, to uh, be challenged in that way. Um, it's also, you know, when you share your expertise, you can also receive from them. It's in the conversation. And of course, it's also being part of the Startup Bootcamp uh, ecosystem. So um, it's giving me a lot as well in return. I think that sometimes mentors are not engaged enough uh, in the Startup Bootcamp uh, uh, ecosystem. So you think? I'm not sure. At least I try to be uh, as part as much as possible because uh, I think that um, knowing what the startups are going through and uh, the, all the phases and uh, the moments that uh, what workshops that they uh, get that it also helps me to tie into at the stage they are in and what knowledge True. that they already received. So but I can. But that's also that. You're here. Yeah. You live here. Yeah. With them. Basically, practically. Yeah. <laughs> so, true. so indeed, I mean, like you take you take full advantage of the program. Yeah. Let me say it like that. Yep. Of the programs. The programs. Yes. I always uh, some, uh, somebody asked me how did Hans co like a uh, cook came to start a bootcamp. He walked in one day. No, yeah, okay, well, uh, <laughs> it was actually was introduced. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But it's just it's just fun to think. Yeah. But you were introduced right through Michael. Uh, no, through Elizabeth. Um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, after I left the bank, I, uh, I visited a lot of meetups because I like to network and mm -hmm. uh, to connect with a lot of people. And then I met Elizabeth, who I know from maybe an Emerald Bank, and uh, she said, oh. You, you should come to start a bootcamp. Yes, so true. No, Elizabeth so Kleinfeld yes. is a national treasure yeah. for so many nations. So true. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Hans, for being a part of this podcast today. It was a pleasure. Definitely the same. Thank you. For startups that are in fintech and cybersecurity, our applications are open. Are you an inspiring entrepreneur with a disrupting idea in asset management, payment solutions, reg tech? working capital and commercial credit, fraud assessment, or credit and loans, then we are looking for you. You can apply today on startabootcamp.org, that is startabootcamp.org, and become one of the next big startups in the fintech industry. This was What's Next. We are available everywhere you get good podcasts. And don't forget to tune in next week for the next episode and follow us on Instagram at startabootcamp.